So today it's all about braking <sighs> and the moho. I uh, have a bit of an issue when towing the Jeep behind this motorhome in that it doesn't stop very good. I mean, it stops okay if you're not in a panic situation, but if you are in a panic situation, there's a bit of weight push in it. So I've been looking for a brake buddy to put in that applies the brakes of the Jeep. So basically your tow vehicle has brakes kind of like a trailer. And look what I found. <laughs> a Patriot Blue Ox um, brake buddy system. And uh, yeah, so today I'm gonna put it in the motorhome. Actually, no, I'm gonna pull the motorhome out. I'm gonna hook the Jeep up. We're gonna take it for a drive and hook this up and see if we can make it work before we go camping and uh, or traveling to make sure it's gonna stop. So if you got a oot, oot, panic stop, you know, you'll set everybody into the aisles. Because it's no fun when you got to stop in a hurry and it's like, whoa, Nelly, whoa, Nelly. And uh, I believe it's law in most places, so. I actually found this braking system on Facebook Marketplace. It was a great deal. Um, uh, she was selling it for $550. Now these things go for like two grand, brand new. So I ended up, I paid for shipping, plus I gave her an extra 50 bucks because her husband had passed away and that was why she was selling it. And quite honestly, I think she was selling it uh, cheaper than it needed to be. So $600 plus shipping, still a great deal. Anyways, let's get to it. But first, I gotta change oil in the motorhome because I haven't changed oil since we went out last, um, you know, on our long spring break trip. So I'm gonna quickly drop the oil because all the oil's in the pan right now. So I can drop it and it's not all circulated. And uh, then when I go for a drive to town, you know what? We can run it, check for leaks, and hopefully there's no leaks, but but yeah, check it out before we go camping. So anyways, let's get to it. <laughs> I don't think I fit under here anymore. Uh, not very good. Uh, oh, and the drain is on that side. I gotta go to that side. Oh, the oil filter's on this side. All right, maybe we'll do the oil filter first. Uh, You'll note that I got boards here. It's a great way to store wood. Just stick it underneath your motorhome. <laughs> Ow! Uh. <sighs> oh yeah. Oh. Uh. A little messy. And I didn't bring a rag. Not my brightest move. Normally I do the filter second, but today we're doing the filter first. I like to give it just a little bit, just a little bit of a snuggie. Not a Titan, but just a snuggie. There. else I do is I always write the mileage and the date so I got the mileage 13,600 miles May 31st 20 2020 or 21 it's 22 I probably should have changed oil sooner but anyways I'll take my hand cleaner wipe and it just wipes the marker right off right off look at that <clears throat> And then I can write the current mileage and the date so that I don't let it go that long between oil changes. Again, the problem is this thing sits most of the time, so. And the good thing is it's in heated enclosed storage. So, helps. And I run a battery tender. So <clears throat> with this thing, every time I have it parked, I plug in my one and a half amp, my one and a half amp uh, battery charger maintainer. And, uh, this thing is seven years old. It's 
still has the original battery. Knock on wood, still works good. So maintain your battery and they'll last a while. Oh, look at that. Down to a drip. <clears throat> Give this a little light. Put the drain plug in. I like to give it another little wipe. Just snug her up. Mm. There. Now in an attempt to not make a mess, <clears throat> I'm going to drain the oil into my catch basin sooner than later. This little thing is right full. Look at how black that is. Black tar. I know what you're thinking. Pay attention, Mike. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. There. I'll go get my funnel and see what uh, 5820. So maybe somebody could fill me in. The foil that's on the top of an oil jug, what happens if that goes into your engine? Is it like gonna get chewed up and clog galleries and all the rest of it? Or is it made to like, like come apart, decompose? not hurt an engine. I would like to think that's the way. I don't know if it is though. If you know, leave bloop a comment down below. I'd be really curious to know. And that rhymes. Oh yeah. Oop. Go, 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 go. There we go, <clears throat> approximately Six and a half liters, or 6.6 .6 I think it takes, or 6.8 or something like that. So we'll check the dipstick now. Yep, shows just a little over full. So hopefully that'll be perfect when I uh, fill the oil filter. Here, now, I checked the transmission fluid. It's uh, full for being cold. Um, I'll check it again when it's hot. I'd like to actually change the transmission fluid. I've only got 18,000 miles, but um, you know, being that this thing is working all the time, I think it'd be a good idea to do it um, earlier rather than later, but not today. So you can see I made my mark, 18,190 miles, August 1st, 2022. So I can either change oil based on Date or mileage? I should have done it by date last time, but instead I went 5,000 miles, so <sighs> have to smarten up. It's amazing how time flies when uh, you're having fun, so. Now hooking up the Jeep is actually pretty easy. I'm using the Demco Excalibur tow bar. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. And we go frame mounted uh, tow points. Or, yeah. plastic caps cover the hole and you take them off put them in your door pocket so you don't leave them behind because you've done it before
but I'm gonna uh, back up now so that these lock. They don't always lock on your first try, so then you gotta just pull ahead a little bit. When they both click, then you're good to go. Andrew's gonna give me a hand. Back straight up. And look at that, they both clicked. So that's locked, that's locked because there's no red line. Cable's good, that's good. We're ready to tow. Well, actually not yet. The next step with the Jeep is you gotta put the transfer case in neutral. Did you put the, so the next step? Let's put the transfer case in neutral. I always like to have the e-brake on. Pull it down for high. And it can be a little sticky. Try putting it in neutral. There. Now you can see it says neutral. You can see it says neutral on the dash. Your um, transfer case is in neutral. So it's good. And you want to put your transmission back in park. Release your e-brake. Shut the vehicle off. And you're good to go. Vehicle speed is too high. I don't know why it's beeping at me. Modern technology. But that's it, and that's what we love about the Jeep because it is so easy to tow. So I've never done this before, but I've watched tutorials. So I think we set it in front of the seat, something like that. This has been, of course, used before. So I put it in position so it pushes on the seat, and then I want to unhook the power cable which is over on this side. Plug it into the cigarette lighter. And, uh, <sighs> turn it on. Does it have power? It does not have power. Which means the thingy has to be. <sighs> okay. So, and the other thing is, it's got this little clamp for your brake pedal so you can turn it so you see, there now that slipped over the brake pedal and slide this forward there the key on so now we can set up Okay, position brake, then press setup. Continue setup. I just pushed on the brake. So the gain is at five, six, seven. I'm gonna say, let's try it at six. And I guess that's it. Other than my cigarette lighter doesn't have power. So I'm gonna have to fix that. Either hook up a power or another cigarette lighter. Cause I don't wanna leave the key on all the time. So we'll make sure it has power all the time. And then we'll go from there. Oh, and I should set up. It comes with a breakaway switch. Uh, so you root this, plug it into your brake buddy, and then have this on here. So then if something happens and it breaks away, you um, your Jeep stops, which is a great idea. So I'm going to have to figure out how to run this wire. Oh, hey, I just noticed our fog lights have little Jeep M grills <laughs> the things you learn um yeah so i might not put this on right away because we've got safety chains we haven't run with a bake bake a breakaway switch yet but um i'll definitely have to figure out how to get this into the cab okay. 
Now, one of the things that Jeep has done is they've made it so that your cigar lighter has its own fuse, which is great because they actually make a, um, the aftermarket makes a um, adapter harness to give it power all the time. And all you do is basically take your fuse out and move it over to the harness. Now, I consider myself a fairly handy guy. So I'm gonna make my own little harness and we'll pull the fuse out. There we go. Just a real small 20 amp fuse. I'm gonna put that in my pocket so I don't lose it. <clears throat> now we'll test which side has power. So this side is the signal. Now I've made a jumper wire that can plug in to this one side. Now I'm gonna have to trim this because this of course is a little too big. I also have a 20 amp fuse to go in this and we're just gonna pick up power from a spare bus connection right there. Work? Oh yeah, that'll work just fine. I'll trim my my Joey plug here. That works just perfect. Well, I found a nut, a little metric nut. So I'm gonna take the other end of my fuse holder here. Put that in, put a lock washer, put my nut. And this is the auxiliary post on the bus bar. Power bar, if you will. Now, I'll put in my 20 amp fuse. Just like so. Get this around over here. And I can put this cover back on. Locked and loaded. So now if we did this right, we should have power going to the brake control. And look, we've got power. So that's perfect. That was a quick, easy fix. And that's the beauty about Jeeps is, you know, they're very utilitarian, like as in they, they've got options for uh, hooking stuff up. Now that wasn't a factory option, but interestingly enough on a Jeep, the cigarette lighter, cigar lighter, accessory power port, I prefer to call it, in the back of the vehicle, you can change it from being ignition powered to powered all the time just by moving a fuse um, from one location to another in your accessory box. Um, but that's what these things are made for. They're made for adventure and doing different things. So they need to make it very easy for upfitters. So, so that was an easy fix. Now I'm gonna hook up the breakaway switch because you know, you don't want to lose a $50,000 Jeep, which let's be real right now, it's probably a $60,000 Jeep with the way prices are. And um, that way, heaven forbid, if something happens and it comes detached from the motorhome, it can put the brakes on, come to a stop wherever it is and, uh, you know, be safer. Cause the last thing you'd want is for it to come unhooked and go into oncoming traffic and possibly injure or kill someone. So. So that's the reason for uh, for the breakaway switch. <clears throat> and I found a plug that goes through the firewall right down there. So I don't know if I can drill through it where it's at to put my plug through, or I might pull that plug out, put a hole in it, and then put it back in, so. Mm -hmm. Never been much of a fisherman, but <clears throat> this is definitely fishing. fishing wires so as they don't get in the way. It's not the easiest spot to get into. We go all sealed up so we don't get any fumes 
or noise. Okay, now our wire is out on the driver's side floor, which I'm gonna have to figure out where you store stuff. And then if I push that in, breakaway is on, set up. Go through the setup process again. You can see it pushing the brake. It'll do this a couple of times and then it should be good. So the next part is pretty easy. We've got our remote um, gain dial plus your manual. Now it had a Velcro thing that you could Velcro to the dash, but I don't like Velcro on the dash because it's sticky. But I do have the magnetic cell phone mount. So I put the little metal disc on the back of this and I'm gonna stick it on my cell phone mount right there and then plug this in and there we go so gain is on five you can still turn the dial and then this is your manual toe brake active shows that the breakaway is on and um and yeah just that simple i might um I don't know, I might do something different with this cord um, in future, but um, for right now, this, this looks like it'll work. All that's left to do is try it. So I think I'm gonna go get cleaned up. Uh, maybe put some shorts on. We'll go for a drive, put some propane in the motorhome, fill it up with fuel to get all ready for the next trip. And um, yeah, see how it works towing the Jeep. Well, we're all hooked up, changed my shirt, put some shorts on, because, you know, it kind of feels like a vacation mode. So I got the uh, breakaway switch mounted here on a nice little bracket. I um, removed that little keychain tag that it was hooked to because it was a little rusty. Um, and then I've got this little cable that I hooked here, because no sense hooking to those if there's, a, if there's a major failure. So yeah, everything looks good. Now let's... Um, Let's try it. Let's go to town and see if it breaks. Like, you know, breaks as in stopping, not breaks as in broken. So, yeah. Ah, I got the AC going. I got my old school GPS that I don't use anymore. And there it is. We got our gain. My sticky came off, so I might have to redo that. But you know what? This is what it's all about. If we're, we're testing. You know, we're testing. We gotta see how this works, so. <sighs> okay, let's do this. I always like to um, have my window down when I first pull away, just so you can hear if anything sounds like it's not working right. Make sure you're not dragging some, some Jeep wheels. Now let's just do a little brake test here. And in fact, I think I'll go make sure that everything is hooked up appropriately. Because I think it should be stopping more than it's doing there. Everything looks like it's hooked up and working. It says ready, it has power, so let's just give it a whirl. Luckily, I've got my keys to the compound. 
So, you know what? We're going to accomplish more than just checking the brakes out today. We'll go for a drive, fill it up with propane, fill it up with fuel, be all ready for camping. Yep, yep, we will. Okay, coming up to the first hill, Mud River Valley. We'll see what it does. See if we can notice it. Because then I got to thinking maybe, maybe it's got a pendulum in it, pendulum. So maybe it'll work better when it's on a on a slope. I don't know. I never actually tested it using that thing before, so we'll see. Well, I've just filled up with propane. So now I'm going to go across the street to the co-op card lock and fill up with gas. <clears throat> I um, I let the fella in to get the truck at work and um, doing a little bit of playing around. I reset um, the feet on the brake controller and I think what it is because it feels like it's doing something and every once in a while I will see the light come on when I stop suddenly um, but I think it's a it's got the pendulum action and then it has like the gain to where of course it doesn't know how much pressure I'm putting on it so it just you know slowly goes on over time you know like they're just stopping I feel like I've got a little extra, if that makes any sense. So, ah, we'll give it a whirl. You know, um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'll check the the Jeep brakes to see if they're warm um, when I stop. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's it just, it, even if it doesn't work 100, 100%, just to give a little bit extra braking and certainly some panic stop ability, um, that's worth every penny. Um, because at the end of the day, the problem with towing something in a classy motorhome, especially a 30 foot classy motorhome, is you're already maxed out for your braking capacity. So, um, very important to have a braking system on your towed vehicle when you have a class C. If you got a big class A, it's probably not as critical, but it's still important. So, anyways, I'm going to go fuel up now and we'll see how it works doing panic stops. Yeah, it's definitely working better. Definitely working better. So, that's good. It's very good. Because this motorhome's heavy when we're loaded up with all the kids and dogs and food and fuel and propane and you know how it goes. And the uh, breakaway switch works too because I tried that. So, And you should always check your breakaway switch now and again. And I don't know what that was, but it sounds like a stainless bowl. <clears throat> yeah, you should check your breakaway switch to make sure that it's working. And every once in a while, just pull it out on your travel trailer, on your towed vehicle if you got one. And yeah, it's a good thing to do. So put some fuel in. Actually, you know what? I'm going to pull up to the fire pump and maybe I can fuel the Jeep for Andre at the same time. <laughs> Wouldn't I be a popular, popular guy? That ah, looks good. Two pumps at once. Almost like I planned it that way. And I be in Andrew's good books because her Jeep would be full of gas when she goes to take it. <laughs> it's almost like I planned it that way, but not really. That and that one's gonna take a little bit to fill up. So this one will be done first. Just don't think about the cost. Just bill will come in the mail next month. We're about it then. Like that, we're done. 
Can't put a price on happiness, man. Still the debt collectors come, but until then, ha! Okay, so I just reset my odometer. Now here's a good test to see if it's working. So um, I got it on nine, so it's gonna put more brake on or come on sooner. So I've got, got it in neutral and we're just gonna slowly roll back. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the manual valve on and see if we stop. And there we stop. Let go. And we start to slowly roll again. Pull it on. And we stop. So there we go. It's working. It just doesn't go and apply all the brakes on the Jeep at once, which is really good because you wouldn't want to flatten all your tires or, or burn out your brakes on your Jeep. But we definitely need it to help because, you know, the E450 is a great chassis for motorhomes. But the kicker is the E450, it's the same for like a 20 foot, 25, 26 to a 30 foot. And this one being a 30 foot bunkhouse. So we pack five people, two dogs, two squirrels and a cat. Um, you're maxed out for weight. So you're maxed out for weight for the E450. So it's good idea to have your towed vehicle have some brakes and it's the law. So in most places, I'm not sure all places. It used to be that if you're below 5,000 pounds, you didn't have to have brakes, but uh, I wonder if it depends on the size of the vehicle. Anyways, we got brakes, so we're good. So anyways, I'm happy with that. We're gonna go home and I'm gonna have to figure out a different mount for this. Now, my little metal disc did fall off, but I used a glass cleaner wipe and cleaned it up. But in all reality, I'd like it kind of like up there. I mean, it's okay there, but it's a little, it's a little crooked, but maybe I turn it eh, like that. But then this wire's there, so. Anyways, I got brakes. That's all that matters, so. Let's take her home, put her to bed. We got fuel, i.e. gas. We've got propane. I should make sure the fridge turned itself on to propane, actually. I mean, technically, you're not supposed to have it on propane while you're driving, but, I mean, it'll be fine. And, um, was there anything else I needed to do? I think just go home and load everything up, so. Anyways, let's carry on home. You know, I often wonder what it would be like to, uh, do van life you know I like to watch the YouTube channels and people uh, living into their van or RV and I mean I think it'd be a hoot because look at look at the scenery like all the places you could go you know sometimes I forget just how beautiful this place is that we live in is but yeah you know what do you guys want to see us when we go on vacation um, you know, take the RV out, stuff like that on Mike's garage. Was thinking about doing some Jeep stuff. Um, you know, oh, there's one of those rotten little horse flies that bites chunks out of you. Um, sorry, sidetrack. Um, yeah, so I was thinking, um, the plan is to go to Barkerville camping and maybe I'll take, uh, do some video of the day trips that we take in the Jeep. And, you know, that's one of the things that I really love about taking the Jeep camping is, um, you know, around here, if you if you get into a spot where you can take the Jeep on a tour, go check out some old mine roads, logging roads, lakes, fishing holes, stuff like that. But um, overall, you know what? I'm happy with the brake controller. Um, happy with the Blue Ox Patriot. Now, of course, this is an earlier version. There's Patriot 2, excuse me, which I'm sure is a little more refined. Um, I'd like a little bit more control. Um, I'd like it to put on a little more brake with the remote, but um, but you know what? So far, so far it's good. Um, I think for what I spent, you know, all in seven hundred dollars. I uh, I think it was a good investment, and uh, you definitely notice it when you you step on the brakes. So I'm curious to see how it does on the long haul for downhills, like long downhills and stuff like that. Um, Certainly with it just having a gain in a momentum sensor, it's not quite as uh, um, uh, precise, I should say, about a, an actual brake controller um, setup that knows how much pressure you're applying. But uh, but you know what? It's convenient. It's pretty quick to install. And uh, you know, aside from having to root the wire for the breakaway switch, really not that much to it. Just plug and play. So when we get home, we'll unplug it see how quickly we can disconnect from the Jeep and um, yeah show you guys how nice it is to tow a Jeep it's a little windy out I can tell it's 
throwing me around a little bit here, but beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. Da -da. Ah. I don't feel like going somewhere far away. I feel like going to Moab is what I feel like doing. You know, I've seen pictures of Moab. Looks pretty neat. Take the Jeep out. Go do some Jeeping in Moab. I think Jeeps and Moab go together like, you know, pancakes and syrup. What do you think I was going to say? Peas and carrots? Goes together like that too, but... <laughs> uh, Alright, I'll quit talking. Oh, we're back. So, that went well. <clears throat> now let's see how quickly we can unhook. So I guess starting now. So we'll apply our e-brake. We'll reach under here, turn this off, unplug that, slide the seat back, unhook this off the brake, which is actually pretty easy. Pull it out. Oh, I should unplug the cigarette lighter. So I'm just gonna set this down there because in real world, it's about how quickly it takes you to unhook, not where you're going to store everything. So I'm going to just unhook my breakaway cable off there, unhook my lights, unhook a safety chain, help if I held the camera in the right spot, pull that out, lift that, lift that, unhook that one, pull this one out, and then I'm just going to put you guys up here. So that took an extra second. Turn that. Uh, oh, I turned it. Which way did I turn it? Oh, <laughs> I gotta lift this up. Slide that in. Turn that one. Slide that in. Lift it up. Put them together. It'll come down on its little post. Like that. Take my clips. Put them back in my hitch. So I don't, and when I say hitch, I mean put it back in the tow bar. And that's it, we're unhooked. The only other step, the only other step is to take it out of four low and pull it away. So. Ugh. And start her up. We need to put it into actually I'm gonna put it into neutral and then we'll put it into four actually <laughs> I was gonna say four high oh I don't know why it crunches like that that's kind of annoying auto park engaged oh it's because the doors open that's why it did that the Jeep is too techy. Because the door was open, it wouldn't go into neutral. Take my foot off the brake. There we go. Now it's in too high. Now I can back it up and and go park it. And now I'm running the um, aftermarket tie-in to your Jeep wiring. So it plugs into your rear taillights and then the taillights on the Jeep work with uh, your motorhome which is really nice because it's just put in a four prong plug and that's it. And just like that, that is it. Ugh. Now the only kicker is there's this cable, which you know what, like, what do you, what do you, what are you supposed to do with that? So that's something to figure out in a future episode or I'll just figure it out, you know, tie it up ah, in a spot underneath. And uh, that's it. And the beauty is, being that that is so fast, you know, um, you know, this, I'll pick this up and I'll just hook it into one of these things. Just hook it into there. Um, because that goes so fast, like we can literally back into a campsite. So like when you get to a, a campground and, you know, you just want to get in and get pulled in, um, the tow bar, you know, I'm using the Demco tow bar 
Demco base plate works really good. So far, the Patriot, it's working. Um, you know, I, uh, yeah, for peace of mind, I think it's good. Um, I guess it remains to be seen. I would like it to be a little more techy and be tied into the, the brakes of the motorhome, but uh, you know, it's pretty hard to have something that's completely on its own that installs that quickly and have it be all tied in. But, uh, and then you got this box to deal with, but um, I just throw it in the back of the Jeep or stick it under the motorhome or put it in a cupboard when you're not using it and yeah color good but anyways guys that's it for me thanks for watching if you like this video please smash that like button and uh yeah leave a comment let me know what you think of the patriot blue ox tow system thanks guys take it easy cheers